All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about level payment amortization for loans. And so, so far we've spent a lot of time in this course calculating different types of annuities, but now we are going to look at one of the applications of them with the concept of loan repayment. And so in particular, we are interested in loan repayment by a series of payments, which is an annuity. And so when a loan is repaid in this way, the total of the payments that we make must not only cover the original amount of the loan, which we sometimes call the principal, but they must also cover the amount of interest accumulated on that loan. And so usually a loan payment is split up into two different components. Part of it is paid towards the interest, and the other part is paid towards the principal. And so what I mean by that is when we make a payment towards a loan, the payment will first cover any of the new interest accumulated on that loan, and then after it pays that, it will then go into the actual loan itself, which we call the principal, and reduce the amount of that loan. And so this leads us into the method that we are going to use for loan repayment, which is the amortization method. And so before we can look at an example, there are many different components that we will use in the amortization method process that I want you to be familiar with first before we dive into the calculations. And so here I have our components listed. We're gonna go through them one by one. And the first one here is L. That is going to represent the loan or the amount of the loan that we are going to be repaying. Next we have K and that is going to represent the amount of each payment, right? That is going to be the payment amount. And in this video, we are only going to be looking at level payment amortization. And so this amount K is always going to be the same. Next we have N and that is going to be the number of payments made. And then I, that is the effective interest rate. And so then here are the three most important components that we are going to be working with a lot throughout this video. The first one is capital OB sub T, and this stands for the outstanding balance at time T. And what this represents is the amount still owed on a loan at a particular time T. Next we have capital I sub T, and this represents the interest accumulated on our outstanding balance since the last time we made a payment. Okay, and then finally we have capital P, capital R sub T, and this represents the principal repaid at time T. And so what that means is this is the amount of the loan that we paid at a particular time, right? So when we make a payment, part of it goes towards the interest and part of it actually goes towards the loan. And so this is the part that actually goes towards that loan. Okay, and so those are all the components that you need to be familiar with when we work with the amortization process for a loan repayment. But now that we have looked at them all, let's actually look at an example problem where we will use and calculate these different components. All right, so here's our example. I want you to consider the scenario where you have a loan of $30,000, and that is going to be your total principal, if you want to think about it like that. And in order to repay this loan, you are going to make five level payments at the end of each year for five years at an effective annual interest rate of 8%. And so we're already told a bunch of different things here. We can already write down some values for some of the components that we just looked at on the previous page, right? So we know that the loan L is equal to 30,000. We know that we're going to be making five level payments. So N is equal to five. And we also know that we have an effective annual interest rate of 8%. So I is going to be equal to 0 0.08. All right, however, in this scenario, we don't know what the amount of each payment is going to be, right? We do not know what K is equal to, but we can figure that out. In fact, that's the first thing that we want to figure out before we can start looking at the outstanding balance, the interest accumulated, and the principal paid at different times for this loan repayment process. All right, and so in order to find that payment K, note that a loan repayment problem is really just a present value of an annuity problem, right? This $30,000 would be the present value today that we wanna pay off in five years with five level payments. And so I have the work on the screen here of what that would look like. It's just a basic present value annuity problem where we solve for the payment amount. And so if you want, you can pause the video if you'd like to look over that work. But now that we have what K is equal to, we can start looking at the calculations for the loan repayment process by using the amortization method, okay? And so let's start analyzing this scenario by beginning at time equals zero or at year zero, right? What do we know about what is happening at time equals zero? 
Well, we're starting with an outstanding balance of the entire loan amount, right? We haven't paid anything yet at time equals zero. We're not going to make a payment until year one. And so all we know in this case is that the outstanding balance at time equals zero is equal to 30,000, right? That is how much we still have yet to pay. All right, and so then let's move on to time equals one. This is where all of our calculations are going to begin, right? Our goal here is going to be to figure out what is our outstanding balance at the end of year one, after we make our first payment. And so before we make this payment of $7,000, we need to first remember that this loan is going to be generating 8% interest every year. And so the first thing that we wanna calculate for year one is the interest at time one. And that is going to be equal to whatever our outstanding balance is currently, which is 30,000 times that interest rate, right? We're gonna have 30,000 times the interest rate 0 0.08. And that will be the amount of interest that this loan will accumulate for that first year. And so if we multiply 30,000 by 0 0.08, that will be equal to $2,400. And so before we even make that first payment, our loan is now $30,000 plus that $2,400, right? The loan accumulated this interest. And so now when we make this payment, part of this payment is going to be applied to this interest. And then the rest of this payment will be applied to the outstanding balance or the principal, right? This is what I was talking about in the beginning where our payments are going to be made partly towards the interest and partly towards the loan. And so this is how we will calculate the principal paid at time equals one that's going to be equal to our payment minus the interest, right? If we take our payment amount of $7,513.69 and subtract the interest of $2,400, that will be equal to $5,113.69. And so what this tells us is that the $2,400 of interest was taken out of our payment, right? And so that interest is now paid off and so the amount of principal paid on our outstanding balance is going to be $5,113.69. And so our outstanding balance at time one will be equal to the $30,000, the previous outstanding balance at time equals zero, minus that principal, $5,113.69. And so that will be equal to $24,886 and 31 cents. Okay, and so that is everything that we would want to calculate for time equals one. And so now what if we wanted to look at time equals two? And so I'll put our previous work in this little box up here, but now we are going to be interested in time equals two. What is going to happen in year two? Well, first we're going to want to calculate the interest accumulated at time equals two. So I sub two will be equal to our outstanding balance at the end of year one, right? Whatever is left of our loan that we need to repay, which is this amount right here. And that's going to be multiplied by the interest rate. And that will tell us how much interest is accumulated in year two. And so we'll take our outstanding balance in year one times the interest rate, which we could just rewrite to be 0 0.08. And if we multiply this amount right here, right? This is the outstanding balance at time equals one by that interest rate then we will find that the interest at time equals two will be equal to $1,990.90. Okay, and so now we can calculate the principal paid at time equals two. We can take that same payment amount, right? We have level payments. This amount of the payments is not going to change and we could subtract out this interest and that will tell us how much of this payment is going to be paid towards the outstanding balance or our loan. And so if we take our payment K minus this interest right here, so I'm just gonna write that as I sub two, that will be equal to this amount minus this amount, which would be equal to $5,522.79. And so then finally, we wanna know the outstanding balance at time equals two, and that's just going to be equal to our previous outstanding balance, OB1, which is right here, minus this principal amount at time equals two. And that will tell us how much we have left to pay after our second payment. And so if we do that, if we take the outstanding balance at time equals one and subtract the principal at time equals two, that will be equal to this amount minus this amount. 
and that will be equal to $19,363.52. And so that is the outstanding balance, okay? And so we can continue on with this process up until our last year at time equals five, and then we would find that the outstanding balance at time equals five is equal to zero, because by then we will have paid off the entire loan. Okay, and so this is the amortization method for loan repayment. And so from that process that we just went through, we can make some generalized statements on how to calculate the interest, the principal, and the outstanding balance at any particular moment in time. Right, so in general, if we wanna calculate the interest at time equals t plus one, we just have to take the outstanding balance at time equals t, or one period prior, and multiply it by the interest rate. And that will tell you how much interest is accumulated for that new period, t plus one. And then for our principal paid at time equals t plus one, that will be equal to our payment at time equals t plus one minus the interest at time equals t plus one. Right, now when you're working with level payments, this k is just k. You don't need to worry about the time subscript because every payment will be the same amount. But in the case that you have different payment amounts, then you're going to want to keep this subscript in mind. But those types of problems are fairly uncommon. And then of course we could rewrite this to be equal to that payment minus the outstanding balance times the interest rate because that's what this accumulated interest is equal to, right? I just replaced this with what it's equal to from the previous formula. And so these are basically the same calculation. And then finally for the outstanding balance, to find the outstanding balance at time equals t plus one, you take the previous outstanding balance and subtract the principal for that time t plus one. Or you could look at it this way, you could say that the outstanding balance at t plus one is equal to the outstanding balance from the previous period times one plus i, that will generate the interest, and then subtract the payment. Okay, and so these are all the general formulas that we can get from the amortization process that we went through for our example. However, there are some extra formulas that result from this process when you have level payments as well. And so here are those formulas. Again, these are for level payments only. The moment you have payments that are not level, these formulas are not going to work. Okay, and so capital I sub T is equal to the payment times one minus the present value factor to the power of N minus T plus one. And then for the principal, we have that the principal at time t is equal to the payment k times the present value factor to the power of n minus t plus one. And then this one's a little bit different. If you wanna find the principal one period after the previous principal, and you know what that is, you can just multiply it by one plus i and get your next principal amount, right? So if you know the principal at time equals two, you can find the principal at time equals three by just multiplying it by one plus i given that your payments are level payments, okay? And so these are some important formulas that you either want to memorize or have written down somewhere so that you can use them as you work with amortization problems. However, notice that we have these formulas here for calculating the accumulated interest or the principal at any particular moment in time, but we don't have one for the outstanding balance. And that's because calculating the outstanding balance at a particular moment in time is a little bit more involved. And so that's what we are going to look at next. Okay, so here's the example we're gonna be working with. We have that a loan of $2,000 with an effective monthly interest rate of 1% is to be amortized by equal payments at the end of each month over a period of 18 months. Find the outstanding balance at the end of the first eight months. And so the focus of this problem here is to determine an outstanding balance at a particular moment in time, right? And we don't wanna do all of that extra work first, right? We don't wanna go through all the work for time equals zero and then time equals one and then time equals two and so on. We just wanna be able to find the outstanding balance eight months into the loan repayment process without having to do all that other work. And so we're gonna look at two different ways to do that, but first we need to figure out how much our payments are, right? We have this loan of $2,000, and we know we're gonna be making equal payments at the end of each month over a period of 18 months, but we don't know what the amount of those payments is. And so just remember that repaying a loan with a series of payments is the same as the present value of an annuity where the amount of the loan is the present value. But to save some time, I'm just going to put the work for finding the amount of the payment up here on the screen so you can see how you would do it. But it is a pretty familiar process and so I thought we could skip over it here so that we can get to the new material of this problem. So you can pause the video if you'd like to look over this work, but that's how we would solve for the amount of the payment K. 
All right, so now that we have a value for k of our payments, we can now look at how to calculate the outstanding balance at the end of the first eight months. Okay, and so we're gonna look at two different ways to do that. The first way is what we're going to call the prospective method. And the way the prospective method works is you wanna think about how many periods are left or how many payments are left to be made to repay this loan, right? So if we wanna know the outstanding balance at the end of the first eight months, then we need to think about how many more months or how many more payments are left to be made. And so since we're making equal payments at the end of each month over a period of 18 months, and we're looking at the first eight, then that means that there are 10 more months worth of payments to be made. And so the outstanding balance at time equals eight would be equal to the present value of the remaining 10 payments. And so we could take that amount K, 121.96, and multiply it by the notation for the present value of an annuity. So we'd have A, and then N would be 10 because we have 10 payments left and then we'd have that same interest rate of 0 0.01. All right, and so then this would calculate the outstanding balance at time equals eight. We are calculating the present value of the remaining 10 payments that we have yet to make. And so this would be equal to 121.96 times one minus the present value factor to the power of 10 divided by 0 0.01. And if you were to calculate this in your calculator, remembering to change the present value factor to what it is equal to, one divided by one plus the interest rate to the power of 10, then you would have that the outstanding balance is equal to $1,155.16. Now remember when you plug this in your calculator to keep as many decimals for your payment value as you can. I know I have it rounded off here, but try to remember to keep as many decimals as you can so that you have the most accurate value for your outstanding balance. Okay, so that would be the outstanding balance at time equals eight using the prospective method, which some would say is easier. But there is a second method that you could use, which in case this method does not make sense to you, maybe this one will, and that is the retrospective method. And so the way the retrospective method works is in order to calculate the outstanding balance at time equals eight, what we are going to do is take our amount of the loan and subtract the payments that we have already made, right? So the difference is that the prospective method calculated the present value of the payments we have yet to make, but the retrospective method is going to subtract the payments we have already made from the total loan amount. And so we are going to take that $2,000 loan, but remember it's accumulating interest for those first eight months that we were making those payments for. So we need to accumulate the interest for that amount over those eight months. And so we're gonna multiply that by the accumulation factor of one plus the interest rate, so 1.01 .01, to the power of eight for those eight months. And then we are going to subtract the payments that we have made so far. And now this is an accumulation of those payments. And so that's going to involve using the future value formula for the series of payments or an annuity. And so we're going to have our value of K, which will be 121.96 times the future value formula where N is equal to eight because we're looking at the first eight months or the first eight payments. And then we will use that interest rate of 0 0.01. Okay, and so then if we rewrote this formula to be what it is equal to, I'm just gonna erase it and rewrite it. That would be one plus the interest rate, 1.01 .01, to the power of eight minus one divided by 0.08 right? That is the future value formula for an annuity or a series of payments. And so if you were to calculate this and subtract it from 2000 times 1.01 .01 to the eighth power, you would find that the outstanding balance at time equals eight is equal to $1,155.16. The exact same answer that we found using the prospective method, right? We got the same answer either way. And so whichever method makes more sense to you, whether you wanna take the present value of the payments you have yet to make, or if you wanna subtract the payments you did make from the loan, you're gonna get the same answer. All right, and so with that, that is all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.